you said something earlier this week that made me think about the way I work. And I kind of wanted to explore that. And I think we talked about bringing it up, but I'm not sure. And that was uh, when you asked me, do you ever wake up with full intentions to get stuff done? And then by the end of the day, you've gotten stuff done, but none of the things that you wanted to get done got done. So I, I'm curious what brought that up, first of all. So I do remember that conversation. And what brought it up is the fact that we were in team talk for AT guys. And you were like, oh, crap, I didn't pay to, I forgot to pay the water bill. Yep. Right. And you were like, oh, so this time it's going to cost me, you know, 10 bucks for a late fee. And it wasn't that you didn't have the money. It's just you forgot to do it. But you woke up with the intention of doing it. Like, I think you had told Mallory you were going to pay the water bill yep. or, or something that you had it. And it just occurred to me that that happens to me quite a bit where I will get up and like I will get up and either someone will have asked me to do something the, the night before or that morning or I wake up to a text message like okay I will get that done and then I get up and I get my coffee going I get my coffee and do all of that come sit down at the computer and I start working and whatever that thing that I was supposed to be remembering to do First and foremost, to start the day off, as soon as I touched the computer, as soon as I had a device in hand that allowed me to do that thing, I don't remember it until eight o'clock that night. It's like, oh, man, I did do stuff like I didn't just sit around and not do anything today. But the one thing or the two things I said, waking up, I have to do these things today didn't get yeah. done. Yeah, I want to know from listeners. Thank you, first of all, to those of you who support us one right now but that will grow but i want to know from you and other people so share this with your friends how do you manage that because that happens to me all the time as demasi brought up good news is that i was off on the time and we did not have to pay the ten dollars which is pretty cool i was almost guaranteed that i had to but i was off it was p.m not a.m but still the point is i do that every day mallory will text me she'll say hey can you do this and i'll say yep i'll get it done never gets done and it's at the point now where, where she or other people expect it. And I don't like that feeling and I need to figure out a way to solve that problem. And it's not that I don't want to do it. It's I get distracted with other tasks all the time. So like yeah. learning Reaper. It, 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 and there's, it, and the thing for me is that, you know, there are some days and I haven't had one of these days in a while. It's like, I, I really didn't accomplish anything. Like I basically just, you know, messed around on the computer all day and really did not actually move anything meaningfully forward mm -hmm. at all. I haven't had one of those days in a while, but I still end up with the same sort of feeling when, you know, I clearly said, I'm going to do this thing or I have to do this thing or, you know, it's the third of the month and this is the last day for me to edit my you know, Amazon subscribe and save order. And 11 o'clock here, it's like, oh man, I didn't do the order. Crap, let me go here and hurry up. Oh, wait, they're on Eastern time. It's too late. Okay, now I'm going to end up with stuff that I didn't need that I got to pay for. And, but it's like there are times where something occurs to me before and using that Amazon subscribe and save as a perfect example. I will think about it on the 29th of the month. You know, going into the next month, because my, my subscribe and say, you know, final day to edit your order is the third of each month. And, you know, the fourth is everything is locked in. They start probably billing me for stuff that they're shipping around the seventh or eighth. So if I don't take something out or add something, I ain't getting it in that order. And I'll think about it on the 29th. Like I did it this month. I actually thought about it around like the 29th of May, you know, Memorial Day. Like, oh, yeah, I need to go check the subscribe and save order to make sure that we're getting stuff that we need. And then if there's stuff that we don't need, I can take that out. And if I need to add something, you know, I can do that. I did not look at that order until Saturday morning, which was the third. Uh, why didn't I look at it on the 29th where I was in the middle of cooking? Some mm, mm. Uh, honestly, although while I was sitting there, could have you know, looked at it real quick, watching it, you know, <laughs> smelling the smoke coming off the ribs because they're already on the, on, on the grill barbecue and, you know, slow cooking. Like, it's not like I'm cooking them on high right, heat or anything right. they on the grill for like <laughs> eight hours. So, I mean, I had plenty of time to do it. It's like, oh, it's not that important for me to do it today. And then I'll forget. And this happens with me. Now that particular thing happens to me quite a bit where I will think about something today and I'll, I'll okay i'll do it and it's like well i'm doing something else at the moment i'm not going to prioritize getting that thing done today because i know i have time to get it done next thing i know somebody's calling is like 
did you do the such and such uh, thing? And it's like, oh, <laughs> hold on. No, yeah. I didn't, right? But hold on. I'm going to go do it right now. I'm going to do it right now, regardless of anything else I'm doing, because I, I agreed to do a thing. You know, it's kind of like with the unmute account that you asked me to set up, uh, which I did that yesterday, by the way. So it's not Friday. Uh, I did it Thursday. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I don't do it. But here's the thing, though. This exact conversation we're having is why I did it right then i think me and you had just gotten off the phone and you were like well i'll tell you know marty that this will be ready you know probably friday thursday or friday right and i was like okay yeah that sounds good right i went ahead and did it right then before i got back into what i was doing before we got on the phone because if i didn't do it i would forget but this also for me introduces the friction of task managers like we we have talked about to do is And, you know, we've talked about reminders. We've talked about all the task managers out there at some point in life and probably tried most of them. But there's that friction. Right. Okay, you send me a text message. Hey, can you set up this account with this, you know, thing and use that email address? Okay, sure. That's not a problem. It's not a hard thing to do. I wasn't going to do it right then. I was looking at it on my phone. I'm not going to go do that from the phone. That's painful. I don't like it. I'm, I'm a Mac person. Maybe that's a part of the problem for me, too, is there are things that I could probably do from my phone that I don't mm. do. Mm-hmm. The one thing I could have done, though, was add that to to Doist and set a due date so that I got a notification, you know, in a couple of days that says, hey, you're supposed to do this thing. Problem for me is there's friction to getting that in there. First of all, because you got to go open the app. Like if I'm at the Mac, right? Right now, To Doist is not even running. All right, I have to open To Doist or open up Fantastical and add a task to To Doist, which in itself doesn't seem like a hard thing to do. But for me, at least, sometimes there's friction because it's like I got enough stuff open. I'm doing things like I don't really want to open that to do this. And then what do I set for the due date? Because I don't have a hard deadline. And what if I say? Okay, due date is Friday, June 9th. All right, okay. Well, it pops up at 9 o'clock on June 9th. And like, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> I can't do this right so now. So <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm in a meeting. Right. So it's kind of that that friction. And I, I know some people listening are like, well, you got to be more disciplined. I'm working on it. I'm trying. But it's... It's the truth. It's why stuff falls to the wayside. It's not that I don't care about projects. It's yeah. Anyways, um, I listen to rich on tech. At least I try to, I don't know if you listen to that podcast and he was going over some of his apps. Here's how much I listened to it. Who's rich? It's June 9th. What? Who's rich? Isn't it rich on tech? What's the, who's the guy who took over Leo show? Mm, I have Hold no on. idea. Oh, Leo yeah. Tredio show? I don't know, actually. Oh, that might be the name of it. Then. So it is Rich on Tech. I had to look it up. The guy who took over Leo Laporte show. And he was talking, this is how regularly I listen to it, on his Memorial Day weekend show, today is when I was listening to that, about how the or about the apps that he uses on his phone on a regular basis and one of the apps made me think about task management and it's called email me have you heard of that one uh what's email it called me? again email apparently me. No. it sounds it sounds like it's a widget that you put on your phone or it only works on the iphone um the closest thing on android is an app called boomerang and it sounds like you open it up and you put in the information you need sent to you as an email and you hit send and it sends you an email and he brought it up because i don't know if he's had the love-hate relationship that we do i imagine he does because he's in tech uh, because i'm new to his show but he said like it or not my inbox has become my to-do list when i get stuff it goes into my inbox so if i have something i need to do or get completed i'm just going to email it to myself so that way when i see it in the inbox i'll actually get it completed i'm like huh That's interesting. If I could get rid of some of these emails and I need to pursue actually getting these cleaned up instead of just deleting the emails, that could be a way to work or set up a label for things that need to go into my inbox and then I, or not inbox, but my email and then just delete them out of there when they're completed. Cause I have no problem with putting stuff into, into Todoist. It's going back to look at what I need to do and checking those things off. I'll put stuff in there all day long. It's it's just <laughs> going back and looking. But if I'm already in email, then it just kind of stays where I am. And uh, like it or not, I'm in email. 
Yeah, so I can tell you right now, I'm absolutely 100% not even going to try that because I don't like being in my email. I'm trying to get out of the email. Although there is a feature that is handy and is going to come in very handy for me, even and I think this may be useful for other people, uh, even if you're not looking to set up a, you know, ticketing system like a Zendesk or Free Scout or Help Scout or, you know, Customer Scout, whatever the scouts are. There's a lot of scouts out there. There's a lot of Zen stuff and a lot of scouts. Somebody should make Zen Scout and then we'll have a complete solution for all of it. Zen Scout. Uh-huh. Uh, app. <laughs> Michael is looking at. Safari can't open the page. Exist. Go register that domain right now. <laughs> so something I just discovered, and it's probably been there for a while, but I, I haven't been in the notification settings for email on iOS in a while, so I hadn't seen this feature the last time I was in there. It was not there. You now have the ability to. I don't know when this got at it, but you can set up notifications for, and mine usually are set for VIPs. Like I don't want normal emails, but if a VIP emails me, I get a notification. Another thing you can do though, is get a notification for a specific mailbox. Oh, okay. So what I am thinking of doing just to test it out to see how well this works is setting up a rule that will move certain people's emails, like based off the, the sender or the domain into a mailbox and then notify me when an email hits that mailbox because it'll be a, a customer. It'll be something I need to address, not a uh, you know Costco <laughs> hot deal start tomorrow email because you know that's what I just saw in my inbox. I'm like that's awesome. You just said there was the end of hot deals two right, days ago. So right, what are you doing? But Don't understand Costco. If you need to work on your you messaging, on head on over to five seconds to impress.com. Absolutely. And uh Get in touch. Non-paid spa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm, I'm going to tinker around with that a bit because that could be a solution for people who don't want to go, you know, shell out the cost for something like a Zendesk or, or, or other ticketing system. Or maybe your business is not even structured in such a way that you need that, but you would like to stay on top of the important emails that come in. Uh, you're not always going to catch all of those. But another way that this could also be useful is if you have a contact form on your website. And if typically, I would say if typically for you, those contact form submissions are legitimate leads or legitimate inquiries from people. Again, set up a filter, you know, customize your form. You should be able to do that. You can definitely do it with uh, Gravity Forms for the from email to be a specific email, you know, on your domain, preferably. And when that email comes in, you can just make your filter rule be whenever I receive an email from contact at bedrockinnovations.com, move it to this folder. And that would be a folder that I could mark as, you know, support form request. It does two things. One, I could possibly get notified by that if I really wanted to, but also it helps organize it. So when I'm checking up on inquiries or potential leads for business, I can just go to that one folder. I'm not scanning through and I'm not having to do a search because it's already been searched and filtered for me. Uh, when it comes to Todoist, this new feature they added is probably going to change my <laughs> life and I'll probably start <laughs> using it again for at least two weeks, which is you can now schedule your reminders, which is what I actually need more than the due date notification. Uh. Like, hey, this is due today. It's like, yeah, but I don't have time right now. And then I forget because it doesn't keep nagging me, right? And we talked about do last week and it's, it's continuing to nag you. But giving me the options to set reminders as I'm putting in the task with nat- natural language, I think is going to be helpful. Because if I have something that's due, you know, let's say with that, we'll go back to this 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 Mastodon account you, you wanted me to set up, mm-hmm. right? For me... Let's say I say, well, I need to have this done before I go to bed Friday night. And you mentioned it to me on Tuesday. I will put that in and say, okay, send me a reminder every afternoon at 3 p.m. You know, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, uh, that's not the exact syntax, but, you know, write in such a way to send me a reminder at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, on Thursday. And then on Friday, send me one at 3 o'clock and send me another one at 5 and probably another one at 730. And if I hadn't checked it off by then, either I've done it and didn't check it off and I'll, I'll remember to check it off so it's done. Or if I haven't done it, I will 
remember to do it because it won't slip my mind in between me seeing one notification and being tied up and then getting free and forgetting that I was supposed to do it. Do you, did sports. you get that email or did you only get it when I forwarded it to you? Nope. I got okay. that email too. Yeah. Play with that. Let's, let's follow up on that. Cause I am curious if you use that for me, reminders is my stay there. And Marty has taken off those reminders cause I let him take those off. And now I am looking at reminders. I'm reminding Mallory, do you have your laptop on the day she needs it? Cause someday she doesn't. And so I'm, I'm using reminders right now as my, as my persistent tool to keep track of things, but more long-term stuff are going into to do sometimes, not all the time. I just don't go back and look yeah. at it. <laughs> and I think I'm going to start using reminders uh, in the house, kind of like, because that's how you yep. got started with it, too, was, you know, you and Mallory being able to, like, Mallory ask you to remind her to do a thing, and you start putting it in reminders. I think the idea was, I'm going to put it on this shared reminders list, so then she'll get her own notification that tells her to do the thing. That didn't work, did it? Um, she Sometimes. uses reminders for her own things that she knows she needs to use reminders. And I'm surprised to see that sometimes. Like, I'll pick up her phone to call her mom or something. Or she'll hand me her phone while we're driving to mine's dead because that's more often the case. And uh, there will be a reminder there. I'm like, oh, oh, you do use reminders. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> ah. So maybe what I should do so is set up question. that shared reminders list. Or here's the thing i'm probably already a member of five shared reminder lists that we have that we've tried out over the years <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i, I had a I've, I've cleaned mine up i think except for the one that you get by default when you set up a family like that one is still in place but i haven't been using it but i'm going to start using that one and maybe popping because sometimes it is a bit easier with with you know uh Siri or even through the use of shortcuts or something like there's sometimes ways to get stuff into reminders a whole lot easier than it is to get it into doers. And if it's just a quick thing, like, you know, that might work too. So she added some stuff to her calendar and it was a meeting with someone that I have never met. Don't even know the name, but it was a contractor at one of the places she works. And I didn't see, and it said work. So uh, I thought it was adding it to my work calendar, and my work calendar is actually called Michael at your own pay instead of work. And so I figured out that somehow we ended up with a shared calendar that is nice because we both know what's going on. So if there's anything I need her to, like if the boys have an appointment or something, it goes on that shared calendar. Because as I said, I went in there and I found like five or six different shared calendars that we've tried over the years, and they haven't worked. But right now it's working, and I'm not going to break it as long as – Things keep working. However, you said something that made me curious, Tomasi. iOS 17 was released earlier this week, and one of the things is now you just say S-I-R-I, and maybe I can just say Siri and it won't trigger it. But I'm concerned. Yeah, it didn't. So I'm concerned, though, that maybe that'll start triggering people's, but I guess it knows if you're intentionally talking to it, because if I say Siri... And then I keep talking. It doesn't seem to respond. But when I am, like when I pick up my phone on 17 and I just say, Siri, uh, what time is it? It'll tell me what time it is, which I actually think a lot of people are frustrated with that. But I think that is substantially more pleasant of an experience, personally. So for me, I would like to be able to address my device by Mm -hmm. name. So... My the HomePod Mini that you sent me is still on my desk, and I named it Shadow. Right, so it would be nice if I could say, "Shadow, what's the temperature in here?" I would have laughed if it responded to you. Man, I would have been happy. I might have quit the show right there. Like, man, I'm done. It's all over. I have reached my goals in life. I'm done. It's all over. I can talk to my HomePod. I'm out of here. Uh, But it would be nice if I could do that, and maybe we'll get there at some point. The just using SIRI to address the device. I don't personally have a problem with that. I, I think they should leave the option for you to choose which one you want. Uh, but as long as that is there, I don't understand why anybody would be uh, pissy about it. Like you have an option, you know, it's different when someone makes a decision and takes away something that you've been using and you were okay with the thing that you were using, even though they're trying to make it better or more efficient. Uh, but if you still have the option, like, there's no need to be pissy. Get over it. There's a lot more stuff going on in the world. It's just serious. However, 
There uh, are some other things that were announced, Demasi. So a lot of things that were announced. So I'm going to admit, so we said last week we were not going to talk about the uh, keynote prior to it, you know, having happened. Uh, because by the time people heard it, it would have been over. And then everything we would have possibly said about it, you would have known if we were right or wrong. And probably would have stopped listening to the show like, oh, they got all of that stuff wrong. I'm not listening to these guys anymore. I don't know what they're talking about. Well, we didn't say we we're going to talk about it today. So Michael watched the keynote. Uh, I have not actually listened to it yet. I do have it downloaded, uh, and I will listen to it to go through it. But I've been picking up bits and pieces here uh, from different podcasts. I had to listen to Connected to find out who won the uh, the Rickies. So that's that's that was my introduction to the things that were announced I, outside of what you told me and what I saw in a message thread here and there. Um. Obviously, everybody's interested in the Apple Vision Pro. I want to ask you about it, though, because you you actually seen the keynote, so you kind of know how they presented it, how they how they waved it out to people. But first question is, what do you think about the name? What do I think about what? The name. I don't remember it. Is it the Vision Pro? It's Apple Vision. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. the Apple Vision That's Pro. That's where I struggle. I'm not sold on that name. I don't know why. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I also see where they came up with it because I was pleasantly surprised that it had cameras like a lot of people thought it wasn't going to. Um, but it, it has plenty of cameras, 12 from what I understand. And yeah, I'm, I, I at first think I told you I'm not going to get this or I'm not super interested in this. And then I started learning more about it and realized, huh? This does kind of sound interesting. Maybe this is something I might use. And so right now, if I can save up $3,500, I might get it. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to wait, like you said, until the second or third edition of it to get one. Or if you want to support the show and buy one of us, you know, buy one and we will share it. We will send it back and forth. we got no problem with mailing stuff. So I'm going to give a fair warning to everybody. Um, all of my rates for everything are going up. Uh, I'm going to start invoicing Mike just for showing up to do our show. On Friday. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to invoice the listeners, the 41 listeners we have. Oh, <laughs> uh, So the name to me is better than anything that was floating around before the mm. event. I, like you, I'm not sure that I'm 100% sold on Division Pro, but I mean, that's what it is. So there's nothing I can do about that. But it's better than the reality pro or the reality headset and some of the other names that I can't remember now that were floating around. Like all of those to me were very dumb. And at least this kind of hints at what it does. Like it, it gives you, and I think that pro moniker is there is because the plan is this is a first step in their, their process of building this. And they had to eventually put it out. I think that's what a lot of the, some of the reporting I've heard recently is like internally in Apple, there's been, you know, disputes on whether it was ready to be released or ready to be announced and et cetera. I feel like this was a good time to announce it at WWDC because right now the primary mode or the primary people that need to be aware and really working on this are developers. Mm -hmm. And you can start thinking about what they're going to do before the SDK is released and they're able to do it in the virtual simulator on the Mac with Xcode. And I also kind of understand why it costs 3500 bucks. I just want to point out, though, everybody keeps fixating on $3,500. I heard a snippet from the keynote. What he said was starting uh, at uh, 3499 uh, I did not catch that. That's scary. Yeah, somebody played it in on a podcast I was listening to. Like they played in that snippet, uh, and and you could hear the gasp of the audience was like, <gasps> like, it's like, oh my God, no, that's not what I thought. Uh well he said starting at thirty four ninety nine. So I'm curious <laughs> what is it what is it max it out go? of? Right? Where does it go from there? Um, like you initially, just based off what I kind of heard and, and and saw very, very briefly. Uh, from from people talking about it, I was like, oh, I'm not interested in it. Like, it, you know, I'll keep an eye on it, obviously, but I'm not even vaguely interested in trying to buy this first one because it's not going to be for me. Like you, though, as more has come out about it, and I've heard more about the, the attention to detail that they've put into this. It's like, you know, I kind of wouldn't mind being on that initial 
track of trying this out and using it and helping to determine not like not determine how people are going to use it, but figuring out how this is going to be useful to other people, uh, especially those of us that are blind. Because, again, I'm not concerned about the accessibility. I'm curious about the accessibility. You know, fairly sure it's going to be accessible to a blind person. I think we already have confirmation of that. If people for people who were, you know, in doubt that it was going to be accessible, I think we have confirmation of that now. But I was never concerned about whether it was going to be accessible. It was much like the Apple Watch when it came out. Just how like how is that interaction mode going to look for me as a voiceover user? Uh, some things that I am curious to one of the reasons I'm interested in it is Apple has done something, I think, that wasn't really fully expected, but it doesn't surprise me, which is this really is an AR device with the capabilities of doing VR, as opposed to what the, the MetaQuest and the MetaQuest Pro and some of the other, you know, headsets that have been out there are strictly VR headsets, right? So it's you in your own world that you're in. And if, you know, you can't interact with anybody else unless they happen to also have one of these headsets and you're in the, you know, place that you can do that. This to me, I think they really, really tried hard to make sure that even though you may be occupied with the headset, doing something inside of the headset, you know, you're not completely separated from the rest of the world. Uh, and mm-hmm. one of the things they did, yeah. I'm, I'm curious how, what people are going to feel about this when they actually get to see it. Like if you're looking at someone through the headset, they see your eyes being projected onto the lenses. That sounds weird to me. It sounded weird the first time I heard it. Uh, before, like, because that leaked, that leaked a while back, and everybody's like, nah, they're not going to do that. That'd be weird as hell. Uh, but they did it. The, the power behind this, it's a computer on your head. So it makes sense why it starts at $34.99. So putting eyes on the on the outside is pretty simple when you look at it now in retrospect, but it is creepy and what type of weird accessibility things is Apple going to do to make that accessible to everyone? <laughs> if it sees you looking towards the headset, talking at it, is it going to say, we're sorry, this person is temporarily unavailable? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I am curious about that. Like, because visually you can see, like, you know, there's some transparency if they're, you know, engaged with the world around them, but if they're, you know, completely kind of shut off in, in a sense, like they're, you know, occupied in a VR space where they're not able to respond to you, like you're going to be able to visually tell that. But yeah, how do you indicate that to a blind person? Maybe it plays a soft uh, sound every periodic. Speaking of sounds, I never feel. realized how important sounds were until clean feed. Like they have very appropriate sounds. Have you heard them yet? Yep, I was messing with him today because uh, I was going to send you the clean feed oh. link. And then Brave looked like it wasn't going to let me select a specific device that I wanted. So I was like, well, Brave, you're dead to me right now. And then I dropped you uh, a link. And then you sent me a link. And when I got in, like now I can see all my devices. So I'm I'm not sure what that whole thing was about. I think maybe what, have, what happened for me the first time is that either I didn't, either it didn't notify me or I missed the alert that it needed microphone mm. access in the browser. So that could be why it wasn't working. Um, but yeah, very curious in the headset. I am now more interested in trying to get my hands on one uh, when it comes out next year. Uh, I'm expecting spring. I'm expecting like a March or April release for this uh, is my expectation. If it doesn't slip, it's also possible it will slip beyond WWDC. I would not be surprised to see that. Some things that I'm interested to do with it, though, is like the virtual workspaces with the Mac, right? I mean, I know it's not going to be, I can't see the giant screen that's there that they're going to project or whatever, but that could be interesting for meetings maybe. Uh, You know, I wasn't interested in the virtual keyboard where you just kind of like tap in the air where the letters are. Cause at first I'm like, how am I going to do that? That doesn't even make any sense. But with the G- technology that we've seen with GPT, if I, I mentally, I know roughly where the key should be in, in a general mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. I feel like autocorrect is at the point where if I write hi, but I don't hit, or if I write, hi, how's it going today? But I hit maybe 30% of those keys, but I'm a key off, then it's it's going to understand and be able to correct that. And naturally, it's just going to be, we're going to just start typing in the air in front of us or something. That's That's weird to think about, but you won't have a phone in front of your face and you'll be able to engage with environment. 
Like that's what has me excited. Cause I think about like, like Ben sometimes he's guilty of it and I'm guilty of letting him play on his phone more than I probably should. I will admit that, but he will go out and just like when he walks to school, he'll just pay attention to his phone and not see anything around him or pay attention to anything around him. And that happens to a lot of people where you're just focused on the screen in front of you. If you can bring Mm -hmm. the input to the air in front of you and take the thing blocking your vision and let you see what's around you. I think in a weird way, it's going to bring us closer to technology, but also closer to people around us. Yeah. And I, I kind of feel like that's what they were going for with this is like, there, there's so much of it that seems to, um, I'm going to recommend people take a listen to upgrade or at least the first part of it, where they talk about the uh, vision pro. Wait, is that what it's called? Now, now. <laughs> so yeah, I don't like the name. Something I think about, it was the yeah, Apple vision, yeah, pro. vision pro. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's the vision, bro. But it always sounds like, wait, am I sure about that, though? Because I'm not sure about that. that. I don't like it. (laughs) Because I'm not sure. (laughs) But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. The Apple Vision Pro. Uh, When you put Apple in front of it, then it sounds right. But if you just say the Vision Pro, which is what people are going to start saying, you, me, I'm questioning it. But I I can recommend that episode, at least up to that point, because that's about as far as I've gotten in it. But uh, Jason Snell is one of those people who who kind of really focus more so on not just like oh it's cool that they did this and look at how they did this and they thought about all of these things he's like this is a you know that's where i got that line from honestly because i haven't watched the keynote uh it's a ar device first with the ability to be a virtual reality device Mm -hmm. so they're they're trying to ensure that you're not disconnecting from the world by use while you're using this is meant to be interactive with the world around you. And, you know, reflecting on Tim Cook's admittedly somewhat, uh, I really want to use a big word right there and I couldn't think of it, uh, is, is admittedly kind of offhand statements over the years that he's made about, you know, AR is really interesting. Uh, you know, oh yeah, AR is, is, you know, something we're really looking at. Like, and it makes sense with this headset why he was, more focused on AR augmented reality than virtual reality because they don't want to disconnect you from the people around you or have you shut off into your own world. I'm also interested in one of the reasons that I probably, I'm going to make every best effort to get it. I will say that for me to learn how to, you know, what it can be useful for and what it's good for, but also to, you know, introduce it to the family and see how they mm-hmm. use it and what they think about it. That is also something that I'm curious about because I don't, I haven't gotten any information about that yet. Is this a single person device like an iPhone or is this a device that when I put it on and it recognizes my iris, it says, oh, well, hi, Demasi, here's your stuff. Right, right. And then if Tia puts it on, it's like, oh, well, hi, Tia, you want to pick up where you were playing this game? That is That right there would completely change the price point value for me because now you're buying an entertainment device for the whole family. Well, an entertainment uh-huh. and productivity device potentially. Yeah, and I, I can see it being useful in both cases. I feel like, uh, and I, again, I understand why it's 3500 bucks. Like, I, I get it because they have done a lot of, they're pushing the edges of technology right now with this from what I understand. Like, the, the resolution that the screens are at is a little bit more than 4K. You're going to hear people just say 4K. It's actually a little bit more than 4K, not quite 6K at this point. Uh, but that that's that's amazing. The transparency and the, the the showing of you know attention, like all of these little things that that add up to you know thirty five hundred bucks. And it's like the way I've heard somebody explain it is they kept hitting you with all this technology that was in the thing before they got around to that price. So when you hear the price, it's like yeah, it's more than I thought it was going to be. But I kind of mm-hmm, understand mm-hmm. why it cost that much money. Uh, Completely. But yeah, definitely interested in it. If anybody has any connections or knows anybody or, you know, needs beta testers or anything, look, we're here. We're open. I will walk around. I will go to California and walk around with it, honestly. I mean, look, if you want to fly me to California, I I should should clarify that. You got to fly me. I'm not going to fly. Although, flight might be cheaper than buying one. (laughs) I mean, you're close. Well, I mean, a flight would be a flight would definitely be cheaper than buying one. Yeah, uh, careful with that word. Sure. Definitely depends on how things are looking with Ooh, things. But yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. perspective should be should be should be uh, cheaper than buying one. But yeah, I'm definitely I'm, I'm for sure interested in, in, in getting one. And I mean, listen, man, like I'm kind of excited to plug it into the Mac and join a Zoom meeting. Like just being serious about it. It, it as nuts as it seems i'm not going to be able to see people but you know maybe it'll do a thing that'll make it more interesting 
Uh, or when doing a presentation, I can actually point at a thing over there and people can see the thing over there. You should listen to Mortex. Uh, they had a conversation about VR. I will find the episode number for you. Uh, but it was a little special of Mortex. And they were talking about their, they were trying out the uh, MetaQuest Pro or whatever it's called. Uh, the latest thing that Meta actually released, not the thing they announced on Instagram to try to jump Apple. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they, they, they had some interesting thoughts about uh, that device and how it worked. But yeah, definitely interested in the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, you can go to yourownpay.com slash support or, or, well, yeah, just go there or go to yourownpay.com slash TW and click on the tip jar link if you want there to you. support yeah. us. Thanks to our subscriber that is out there. We appreciate you. Um, you never did email us and tell us if we could use a name or not. So we're just going to keep referring to you as the, uh, the number one subscriber. There you go. The number. Uh, well, hopefully that doesn't discourage anyone from wanting to become the number two subscriber. So did Apple talk about anything else that you want to chat about? Or do you have something else that you want to uh, bring up? Because the only thing in iOS 17 that intrigued me at first, well, I saw it at first and then I forgot to bring it up a couple times, but that check-in feature, I am super excited about. I want to play with that. So you can set it up. So if you are going to go on a journey home or somewhere else and you can let certain people know, hey, I've made it here or, hey, I'm going to be delayed by a half hour, uh, you know, expect that I might be a little bit later. But that way it's all kind of automated. And it, I think it's going to tie into the journal feature of iOS 17. I have a mixed relationship with day one. I want to journal, but I don't journal. But when I go back and look at some of my journals, I'm like, oh, oh, I was thinking that when that happened, I don't even remember that. So then I see the value in journaling. And so I start to journal for a day or two and then I stop journaling. <laughs> so I hope that Apple being my journal provider, because I'm, I, I'm, I'm an Apple person. I have this pixel to the left of my keyboard, and I just don't give it the fair attention I should. Anyways, I'm an Apple. I mean, to be fair, it and, is a Pixel 6 Pro, so I mean, you know. And so if Apple does <laughs> allow That's journaling... Fine, yeah, take that. <laughs> oh, wait, now they're not going to ever send me anything else again. I'm sorry, wait. No, probably not. Probably not. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, we're, oh, focus modes, though, because that was what I was going to bring up. I'm, I'm not sure I haven't seen any differences in focus modes, but I'm playing with shortcuts on Ventura. That's what I'm on, right? Am I on Ventura? Yes. I'm playing with folk, or I'm playing with shortcuts on uh, Mac OS 13.4 uh, since you know Ventura, whatever. And shortcuts is a lot nicer to navigate, so we can talk about that. But you, have you been playing with focus modes? Because I deleted all of mine except for Do Not Disturb. It won't let you delete that one. Yeah, so I've been playing with them. I have not gotten them to the point that I want them. But honestly, the past couple of weeks has been busy. But I can tell you what I've done up to this point and where, where I'll tell you where I'm trying to end up at. And when I get there, we'll definitely I'll definitely share this on the show. But so, for example, I have an AT guys uh, focus mode that I, I'm in the process of setting up. And the reason is not just a quick boom, 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 knock it out is because I'm trying to take my time and one, let notifications through that I know I need to let to let through. But. The other part is I actually want to make use of the custom home screen and custom lock screen here mm. for this focus. And I want to start doing this with more of my focus modes because I've never used those features really. Uh, so I want to make use of a custom home screen. And on that home screen should be uh, the Gmail app because that's what I have AT guys email set up on my phone. No notifications come through for that account at all. Uh, but that'll be the app I'll use if I need to check email because – you know, I'm working and I pull my phone out or if I'm on like I was last Friday, you know, I'm at an event for AT guys. I turn on the AT guys focus mode and, uh, you know, everything that I need is there at my fingertips. Slack mm -hmm. is another app that should be there. Uh, also on that, that home screen, I would like to have Slack there. Uh, I don't know what else needs to be there, but those two for sure. Uh, you know, notifications allowed from, you know, Michael and JJ in Slack and in messages. Uh, as well as phone calls, Tia, you know, a couple other people probably block the kids out because they start texting me just, you know, ridiculous amounts of emojis. <laughs> How does somebody put 37 emojis in one message that quickly? I got 37 <laughs> shopping bags yesterday for my daughter. It's like, man, I ain't got no money. 
<laughs> yeah, but she knew what she wanted. Shopping time, Dad. <laughs> like 37 shopping bags. So I did start out when I reset my phone by deleting all of the focus modes that I had previously set up. Uh, except for my work focus. I will eventually mm. delete the one that's called work. But right now, it still does the thing that when I'm in a meeting, it automatically flips on, which means I'm not getting random calls. I don't even know why that Slack message from JJ just got through, honestly. Huh. Yeah, well, that's that's interesting. Maybe, maybe you set JJ as a priority content. Or maybe iOS is learning about you mm-hmm. that maybe, you want to see messages from I mean, JJ. I probably want to see that from JJ, though. I don't know. Yeah. I will investigate that. See, my that work focus is super nice, uh, but I want to know why it's working. So I, I did destroy mine. So maybe when I'm setting up a focus mode, there's an option. So I will play with it. So there I are might some, try setting up some focus modes on the Mac instead of on the iOS. Yeah, the, the one thing that stumps me, and I don't know that there's anything they can do about it, is because I've had to go edit a focus mode on the Mac. Like let's say on iOS when I set up the, my work focus, right? I wanted mm-hmm. notifications from Fantastical because there are times where I have like back-to-back meetings. Uh, yeah. You know, not back to back, literally, you know, 11 o'clock, right. 12 o'clock, but maybe I have an 11 o'clock and then I have a 1230 or a one or something. And then that 11 o'clock runs into like 1230. Well, like I need to know that I'm 30 minutes away from the next meeting I need to be in. So mm-hmm. fantastic out notifications. I would like to get those. Well, I also had to go on the Mac and add the Fantastical app on the Mac to allow it to come through as well. Like it didn't go across that platform for me. Okay. With okay. that. Uh, messages seems to do that. Contact seems to do that. But I'm guessing it's third party apps because, you know, of course, not every single app that's on your phone is going to be on your Mac and they can't even expect you to have it there, I guess. Uh, another thing that I want to set up with these focus modes too is, uh, calendar sets with Fantastical. I did discover that you can do this with the default calendar app. So it is possible to have a specific set of calendars show based on a focus mode. I just really don't like the default calendar app. So <laughs> moving on from that. But I, that was one of the questions I wanted to answer, like how far can I go with this? And I, I actually could get fairly far with it. Uh, being fair, notification seems to be a little bit more reliable with the calendar app because it's Apple's app. Uh, and that's the only reason like it's Apple's app. So they get some entitlements that fantastic or any other third party calendar would not get. But there's that entry thing, right? So back to Fantastical for me. Uh, but calendar sets are a thing in Fantastical that if you're not using them and you have several calendars as I do and as I know Michael does, it is super helpful to have specific calendar sets. You can always view all calendars. Uh, right now I have a Bedrock calendar set that shows me my Bedrock Innovations calendar, the one that I use for people booking and scheduling appointments related to Bedrock. It does show my family calendar. So when someone asks me, are you available for a meeting at this time? I can take a look and make sure there's not a doctor's appointment there if it makes it on the calendar. Uh, and then I think that's it. I have a couple of to do uh projects also there. Uh, there's an AT guys now calendar set uh, and that shows the AT guys team calendar because it's the only one I'll be putting events on. I don't see a reason to put them on my personal calendar because I'll probably lose them. Uh, that also shows my family calendar and it shows the AT guys, uh, to do his project. And Michael's frantically typing away. He's typing brew install. No. <laughs> well, for once, I'm not typing brew install. Surprisingly, I made a cup of coffee with the intentions of drinking it two hours ago. And- oh man, now you got cold brew. Yes, sir. <laughs> Which is not as good as real cold brew for some reason. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Mm-mm. I've tried that. It, it does not, you know, I, well, I've tried to redeem a cup of coffee that got left sitting like, oh, yeah, well, it's just be like drinking cold brew. No, it's not. It's, it's not at all. No. Uh, you can also set filters with uh, a lot of apps, actually, a lot. Of, and that's, that is the thing that I'm wanting to take more advantage of with my focus modes uh, this time around as I am rebuilding them and tweaking them is being able to filter you know, what's shown to me in an app based off the focus mode that I'm in. And I'm, I'm honestly trying to get to a point where I am always in a focus mode. Oh, okay. Uh, whether that's a, you know, something dealing with work, something dealing with family time, or just a general focus mode. And if I'm in, you know, I don't know what I'm going to call it. It'll probably just be like a, you know, I don't know. I'll put an emoji on it or something. Uh, ooh, ooh. 
We talked about that once, putting emojis on your focus modes. Yeah, man. Like a microphone for recording or something. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that's the other one I got to work on, too, is my recording focus mode. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get to a point where I'm always in a focus mode. And reason for that being is like there's oftentimes that there are things. Well, I, I guess just being wide open leaves me wide open. And if I'm in a focus mode, I can filter what I see, which could help me not do things like, let's say, if I'm in recording focus mode and I just randomly hit, you know, right option M because it's a habit. And then I look at the email. It's like, oh, then I get distracted. And it's like, no, I won't do that because what is it going to show me? It's not going to show me anything. It's going to say mail is restricted. You cannot use mail right now. <laughs> oh, man. I don't, man, I, I don't know. I'm going to go look that. and see if you can set up different activities in iOS 17 under focus modes. Oh, oh, oh. So you could have different commanders based on your focus mode. That would be nice, huh? Right option M will only take you to your AT guys and it won't let you see anything else because you have a filter on mail. Mm hmm. So, yeah, that could be fun. Or right option M, just as a TTS, it says, get back to work. Get JJ to record stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as far as iOS 17, again, not having seen the keynote yet, uh, a couple of things that jumped out at me recently that I just heard about this morning. Uh, shared keychain passwords and passkeys. Mm. So, and this is actual full on sharing similar to what you get with one password, a bit or whatever, where you have a shared vault with someone, you'll be able to share a password and presumably also pass keys will work the same way, but share that login information with someone. So like you could share this with Mallory and then if you update the Netflix password, it would update for her as well. Not the, Oh, I airdropped her the password, but then when I changed it, she still had the old password. Uh, deal. So that's interesting to me. Uh, I'm going to make a promise to spend some time this summer before the release of iOS 17 uh, using the Windows iCloud keychain integration deal to see what is, if it's useful, because I feel like if it, if it's useful enough and it's not too restrictive, like if they just say you can only use it in Chrome, like it's, it's not, it's a non-starter. Uh, but if it's available anywhere in the it, with any browser, at least, and optionally, it would be nice if there was a way to get to your passwords in Windows through the iCloud control panel. Uh, you know, it would be a nice recommendation for people who either are not yet using a password manager at all uh, or are very lightly using iCloud Keychain. Because from a security standpoint, it's solid. Like what they're doing with iCloud Keychain is solid. Like I, that's not my issue with it. My issue is, number one, uh, I couldn't share stuff. Like actually have a shared, you know, constantly shared item. So when changes were made, they reflect everywhere for everybody. And we got a lot of shared passwords in this house. <laughs> a lot of shared info in general. You know, uh, so that's handy. Uh, that, and that's also going to share your uh, two factor codes if you're saving those in iCloud Keychain. So this this could be a a way to get out of one password for some people or even get out of spending money altogether for a password manager. I mean, granted, you're paying a thousand bucks for your phone, so you're paying for it. But, you know, it's not a residual ongoing monthly or annual bill that is due for me in August. Uh, you know, because that's when it's coming up is August. I'm going to play with pass keys on my Google account. That tells me I'm a glutton for punishment because I heard a couple of people who've had problems, but I am going to play with it and I will follow up next week to see if I notice or see how that experience is. I'm going to reach out to my workspace administrator and get him to turn them on. And I will try them too on my workspace account uh, and, and, and see how they work because I, I, you know, one, I need to stay on, on them, even though I have issues with them. Like, I want to be fair. Like, I honestly have issues. I was just having this conversation with somebody before I started recording. Uh, but I honestly have issues because I feel like with Apple, I think they have prevented this. I don't know enough about what Google has done to say they have or have not solved for this potential issue. But the scenario is, let's say I switched over to using the Pixel. And that is my phone. I go out and buy a Pixel 7a. I'm like, man, this phone is really great. I'm going to use this the rest of the summer. And I can put the betas on my iPhone. Yay. All right. So, yeah. Uh, anybody got a Pixel 7? Uh, <laughs> 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 That's not actually a bad idea. If I had the money to go buy a Pixel 7a, I would do it and use that for the rest of the summer so I could put the betas on my iPhone. But 
let's say I do that. And, you know, of course, before you can really proceed beyond any point or to get access to your data to restore and all of that with an Android phone, very much like on iOS, you have to sign into your account. Well, on Android, that is your Google account. What if I only had the pass key on my Android phone? Now, of course, mm-hmm. it's syncing through Google's services, but I don't have another device to get my, you know, let's say I wipe my, my phone or I break my phone and then I have to get an entirely new one. So the old one, for whatever reason, there's not an alternative device available to me when I need to set up my phone again. How do I log into my Google account? You send Google your photo ID. That would be horrible because I don't have a way to take a picture of my ID to send Mm -hmm. it to you because I can't Mm -hmm. get it to my phone. And if I bypass the login, then will I never get to send anything anywhere to anybody for help because I don't have my contacts. Now, I I can think of some ways around this. Google could still allow for you to log in with a username and password and, and, you know, an alternative two factor method, which is probably going to be a solution for them for a while. But the dream or the hope of pass keys is that you'll get rid of passwords altogether. So, again, how do I solve for that if I don't have another device that I can log into? Or that I'm already, excuse me, already logged into because I can't log into anything else without the passkey. What do I do? And I do not have focus mode enabled because I deleted all my freaking focus mode. So that means I got a phone call from a spam call. And see, that is why I am considering going into always being in a focus right? mode of some sort. A focus mode. So I can get rid of those spam calls. Uh, and, you know. Leave a voicemail. Hey, I set up my voicemail on my personal phone for the, you know, since I switched over to visible. I finally, I mean, it just tells you the number you've called, but at least it's there now because I kept forgetting. Can you, can you bring audio in so people can hear what happens when they call me now? Cause Apple stole my voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> that might change. Maybe we don't want to do that, but Apple stole my voicemail. <laughs> So the feature Michael's talking about, we can we can do it at the end and then you can drop it in if you want to. Uh but the feature Michael is talking about is what what do they call this? Is this like uh voicemail transcripts. Voicemail transcripts. Or live transcripts or something. Uh they wanted to call it visual voicemail, but they couldn't call it that. It's something voicemail, I think though. Uh transcribe whatever the feature is anyway the way it works is someone calls your phone you have this feature turned on in ios 17 only so right now mike has it on the beta because he's 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 uh, live voicemail there we go live voicemail they wanted to call it visual voicemail but that's already been taken uh i called mike and what i heard was please leave your message after the tone the person you're calling may pick up (laughs) i was like okay i don't know what the hell is going on i was like what the hell did mike do so uh, I started talking like, well, I was just returning your call, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And I th- think you answered. Yeah, you did answer. Yeah. Yeah. So th- I was reading the transcript. The first thing I thought about is this is going to turn back into what I finally have gotten some older people to stop doing <laughs> when they call you <laughs> and they get your voicemail and they sit there and they spend the first two minutes of the voicemail of the five minute voicemail that they leave you saying, pick up. Are you there? Pick up. It's so-and-so. Pick up. I can't hear that. I don't hear that at all. Now people are going to start doing this again. When they call, they're going to be like, pick up. I know you're probably there. Just pick up. You're reading my voicemail right now. Pick it up. (laughs) No, no, I'm not. But yeah, visual voicemail. Nope, that's not what it's called. Live voicemail. Uh, Seems interesting. It kind of just seems like they're bringing back answering machines. Everything that was old is now new again. Look, here's an answering machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any more things that I've heard. There was one thing that I think I asked you about, like, why didn't nobody tell me about this thing? You guys just missed the whole thing and nobody said anything about this thing, but I don't remember what it was now. So I will tell you, I've told Mallory. We do have Snoopy like, coming to the watch face, though. I'm excited about that. Yeah. And you know what else is coming to the watch? That's a great transition is uh, now you don't have to swipe up to get to your control center. Your side button becomes your control center button. So I'm going to buy an Apple watch, uh, whatever it's called. Ultra. Ultra. Yeah. Mallory loves hers. I'm going to probably get one. I'm I'm waiting to see if they're going to update it this year or if it's going to be like one of those every couple of year cycles. Uh, 
and it, whether I whether they update it this year or not, I'm probably not going to pick it up until you know next spring. Hey, it'll be in the same box for my Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no. The watch, so what I've heard about the watch leads me to think that basically they've taken some of the functionality of the of, of what I liked about the Siri watch face and made that kind of available everywhere and enhanced it a great deal. Uh, and I, I don't know anything else beyond that. Uh, widgets somehow have a role here and uh, you can put complications inside of a widget. I, I don't know. It's, it's confusing the way people are talking about it without me having looked at the keynote. Uh, oh, oh, where I was going with that, and I don't think I finished that thought, is I tell everyone I'm not going to update. I told Mallory I wasn't going to update. I'm probably going to update my watch, honestly, because I only get half of the iOS experience until I update my watch. But I don't want to update my watch because when things break, I don't have a watch. But I'm also not keeping a move streak. Ooh, there's the transition. And that brings me to, um, unless you have anything else to talk about WWDC, I want to get a fitness update in because I have got nowhere on my fitness and I need to go out and do more. And I think you and I should start a contest or something. We should start and that. And track it on the show. We should do that, Will. So I, we, one of us will challenge the other one before Monday. So we start on Monday and we won't report on it next Friday. Because mm-hmm. we won't have finished the challenge, but we will follow up that week after. And but we can check in on the challenge next week. Yeah, we can. For accountability. Yeah, we, we can. I mean, we'll do it for sure. I, yep. I've never had a problem challenging you. It's just whether or not I did anything to win. It's just, right. <laughs> but I also need to start in on the fitness stuff. So that will be a good uh, way to get started. And I should also reach out to. Uh, I, I think, Oh, yeah. That. No, that's not where I, that's not where I was going. No. Oh. Yeah, that's not where I was going with that, actually. Uh, but I should do that also. Thanks for the reminder. Hold on. I'll put it in to do list. I, I should also probably reach out to what I th- who I think is friend of the show, Jeff. Uh, and, Jeff, are you listening? And uh, We've never got feedback from Jeff. Yeah. Not once. Not once. Not one single time, man. That's why I, I think friend of the show. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. But reach out to he's Jeff. he's moving. So he has plenty. Of, he should be listening to the show while he's moving. He should be, but you know, sometimes when you're moving, especially if other people are helping you uh-huh. move, you want to have your ears completely wide the hell open, man, because you do not want to <laughs> take that couch to the shin. Like, I promise you don't. Uh, <laughs> so I can completely understand why not. But Jeff does a lot of consistent fitness stuff every day. So it would also be motivating. I'm assuming it would be motivating. It may turn out to be like, I'm like, oh, well, you know, whatever. Uh, but it probably would be some motivation to uh, have to compete against Jeff uh, as well as is Jeff does what I think he would do, which is also trash talk me a little bit like that'll that'll make it happen. <laughs> Jeff has a way of saying stuff to goad you and to be like, man, you know what? I'm not taking this for you, man. Like I'm yeah, not dealing yeah. with. I'm it. gonna get out there and go. I so ultimately by the end of the summer, I want to have a plan to explore this leader dog program the more i think about it not for a guide dog but the cane training that yeah. Packer was talking about so oh yeah but that, that unless is- i go out and start walking like it's at the point right now where i don't go anywhere on my own and it's it's not a good feeling that's that's the best way i'll put that yeah when you don't I'm, go places yeah i'm, I'm kind of there too like some of it is so i get that feeling uh i have been comparing my time in well my time in Tuscaloosa compared to my time just about everywhere else I've lived uh and in Atlanta man I, I went from every side of the city when I lived in Denver when I was in Denver for a summer I went everywhere which kind of I had to because I was teaching on them so didn't really have a choice about going everywhere like you can't just hang out at the at the center with students that's frowned upon you're supposed to be teaching them uh houston uh, i got around quite a bit uh even in places that there was not public transportation that i've lived like i've done a lot of walking uh and here like i have not done any of that nearly as much as i would like i know some of the area but i'm not as familiar with tuscaloosa as i should be for as long as i've been here right by my measurements right not not by anybody else's but my own and that does bother me a little bit right because you know am i losing the ability to do certain things am i losing the ability to travel independently without being you know like i'm gonna be honest man i'm nervous as hell about this airport i'm not gonna even lie to you 
Because it's yep, been a while since it. I've been in an airport anyway. Uh, and then just the lack of constantly using those travel skills makes me feel a little bit more anxious than I ordinarily would. Usually going to an airport in the past, I would be like, okay, so let's see how good or bad the service is going to be here. Like how much trouble am I going to have actually getting to my gate? But there's not any concern that I'm going to be the issue, right? Whereas now I'm like, man, I don't know. I might need to... Uh, I might need to hire me a, a, a personal assistant to, <laughs> to, to get here. Uh, but yeah, remember that, though, we have tools to help with that. And that's what I forget sometimes in the heat of the moment. I need to be aware of that. Like we do have tools that I did not have when I was confidently traveling independently. To and that's kind of the weird dichotomy here is that there is way more, way more tools available for navigating i mean just general navigation never mind airport just general navigation and i had in a lot of places i have lived and was just moving around like it was nothing and it's like now is you know you got all these apps and if i get to the airport there's you know there's things like ira there's be my eyes there's you know whole tons of stuff to use i don't even know if the airport has any of these you know indoor navigational things right the technology we have though now i think i think i'm I'm, so ultimately We'll come back to it. We'll follow up. We'll see who is who's more productive and gets out there. Because I got to get out there and be more active. I got to get more comfortable in my local community. I can't even go to my local grocery store and go find the stuff I need at the store in a general idea. I mean, I guess I have a general idea, but I haven't done it. And that that bothers me because I realize you know that's a skill that I have, and if you don't use it, you, you lose well it. May lose uh-huh. it. Uh huh. And that is one of my concerns. And you know, there's also just the fact of you know lacking. I'm not gonna say not having the independence, but not using the skills. Right. That that's the thing that's you know beginning to kind of bother me a bit. Is like I don't. Somebody tells me, oh, you know, I need you to come here to this place, and I'm like, I have no idea where that place is in Tuscaloosa. And like, it turns out it's like two blocks away. When well, probably not two blocks, but you know, five minutes, ten minutes away. Probably what would amount to maybe a twenty minute walk for me to get there. Right. Uh, yep. You know, the furthest I have been from where I live now, walking or you know, walking, not getting to somebody's car, going somewhere. It's to the kid's school. Yeah. Which is, you know, literally a 10 minute walk for me, maybe a five and a half, six minute walk for me if I'm walking by myself. Uh, but I've got to do better. So yeah, we'll, we will, you know, revisit this topic for sure. As we get out, I only did that because I needed to go test out that, uh, that, that, that one thing on the blind show. Like that's mm-hmm. literally what pushed me around the corner. Yeah. Cause convention is going to get me back on the travel. Once you get, I, I will tell you from experience, cause I have flown more recently than you have. Like you, I was, I, I had concerns about going there, but once you get back into the groove of figuring things out, it, it naturally, it's like riding a bike. It comes back to you. Uh, but it's that time until you get there and then you realize, oh, I can do this. Oh, yeah, and that's encouraging. Cool. But then you get home from convention, you're like, I traveled across the country. I'm not going anywhere. My I don't I don't anymore. feel like walking around here to this piggy yeah. you know, I'm not doing that. Uh, so, <laughs> but that's I why I want to explore this leader dog program because maybe that'll give me some more confidence or some more skills that I can apply in my because I can travel. I had no problem when I got to Omaha traveling. Like Travel just fine, but, you know, getting out and going and doing stuff, it can be appointed to laziness. But here's my thing, and maybe I work like a guide dog. I have to have a destination and a purpose to go. And really, everything I can do is at home from the computer for the most That's part. a little bit of it, too. For me, is like by the time I, you know, started noticing I hadn't been traveling as much here or at all here, it's like, well, what do I need to go anywhere for? Like if I need to grab something small, you know, there's a little convenience store that's right in the middle of the block. I, I walked there, you know, a lot, but other than that, like yeah. what else do I need to do? And Tia's usually going somewhere anyway, so I just have her pick it up. Like, yep. you know, what's the point? But exercise, I think, will also help. That That is the other reason I think fitness has come back around to me once again, because it's not the first time, but once again is because that is putting those two things together solves that problem that you just identified, which is if I don't really have a purpose to go walk to, you know, this, this little plaza that's about 15, 20 minutes away from us and then, you know, do something and come back home, like, why am I walking over there, right? But if it's exercise, because I got to get my rings closed so that Mike doesn't stomp the crap out of me in this competition, 
Well, you know what? Guess what? I'm out there. And now more people see me, which does lead to conversations at times, too. So that, there, yes. there's that aspect of it. So, And I am interested in that leader dog program myself, too. I don't know when I'm going to go, but I am absolutely going if it, you know, well, no, I won't say that. We'll knock on wood for what I was about to say. But, yeah, I have, I have every intention of going there uh, to do that. When is going to be the thing, but it's more of a win, not a, well, maybe, right? When right. I heard about yeah. it, I was like, oh, I'm sold, like absolutely 100% sold because I know I'm not, I mean, I'm pretty good. I've taught people, but it doesn't mean I know everything, right? It's just like being mm-hmm. able to teach somebody something on the Mac doesn't mean I know everything. And I'm aware of that. I'm fully aware of that and embrace that. And, you know, just, you know, he probably doesn't listen to our show, but, uh, you know, j- just to applaud Kayaker for recognizing that within himself and taking that, that journey to go to the leader dog program. And I appreciate that he, I appreciate it that he did it. And also appreciate the fact that he was, he shared it because I, I never knew that existed. So. Yep. Me neither. Or, well, actually I think I knew something like it existed, but like him, I assume they're going to teach me how to use two point touch or how to trail a grass line to find the end of a, of a block or something, you know, like the basics that I already knew. Right. I need to be more confident with using the skills that I have versus learning the basic skills. And that was Andrew. <laughs> it's like, hey, 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 I'm over here. You don't see me? Look. Yep. <laughs> hey, 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 take me to work with you. I can be the, the, the mascot for, right? for the restaurant. <laughs> Hmm. We're at about 70 minutes. So if you have anything else, we can go into that or we can wrap it up either way. I'm trying to remember if there was anything we were supposed to follow up on that nobody added to a list. Uh, oh, probably. I mean, I'm pretty that sure. Would, that would mean that one of us would, uh, I don't know, uh, listen to the show. Well, I mean, you edit the show, man. So <laughs> what's your excuse? I said listen to the show. I didn't say edit the show. Yeah, but you're listening when you're editing. By the time you're no, done, you know what? Not, not really, actually. You, you, Most of the time I I hear the show, but I listen for like, um, I listen for keywords or mouse smacks. I don't really re-listen to the content too much, usually. So I can't think of anything. I got Reaper installed. I got to get Reaper set up today because I got to do a project. You need for... to go to the global voice.info slash Reaper. All right, I need to go to the global voice.info slash Reaper. Yep. That's the global voice.info slash Reaper. Oh, wait, we're not being sponsored by them, but <laughs> no, I downloaded that file. It's actually in the root directory of sync. It's a, uh, I think I put the zip file in there. Uh, I'm going to play with some more cool things about Reaper. And then there's uh, another training that I'm going to look up that teaches you that's free from Drew Weber. You know Drew. And he made a making liners for radio station course that he's giving away for free using Reaper to teach you how to make voiceovers for liners and then sell those to radio stations. Hmm. Hmm. I'm starting, you know, this keeps coming up. It, it keeps coming. Up. I know why some of it keeps coming up is because I talk to you a lot and you're doing voiceover work and you're breaking into that space. But it keeps coming up from other people to me about voiceover work. And I'm like, I, I wasn't really trying to go do this. So don't. <laughs> go advertise yourself. I'll take 15% to do the follow up and stuff, and then we'll just sell your voice. Because people want your voice, but you don't want to run the business behind it. <laughs> See, I thought that was going somewhere completely different. Like, well, don't yeah. just send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> No, see, that's the thing is, is I know there's some projects for your voice that would be a lot better. I do want to get into some more audio description work because I think that would be fun to just read the audio description. Um, so, yeah, but someone did compare it to reading an audio book. And I'm like, yeah, now all of a sudden that doesn't sound very interesting. But when you think about it, it is kind of like reading a weird formatted audio book. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to dispute that person's comparison because I've done neither of these two things. But from my perspective, I would think going into reading a transcript for audio description is a little bit more fl- like, honestly, I think that might be harder for me than doing an audio book. 
Yeah. And the reason is because you have to try to keep the inflection out of your voice for most things with the audio description. Yeah, you, know, you can't start reading about, you know, the guy that is tiptoeing around and he has a, you know, sniper rifle or whatever and start getting excited about it because you're like, oh, man, what's going to happen? Now the excitement is all mm-hmm. in your You can't do that. You mm-hmm. can't stay flat mm-hmm. and neutral. Mm-hmm. You're, or follow the guidelines that are in the script because well, th- yeah. there are some that do have inflection. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. You have to stick to whatever their guidelines are. Uh, and I know me, like, you know, if I was reading, I'm like, oh, man, wait, what's going to happen? I, I might have to go read the whole script and then come back and be like, okay, well, now I can do this because I know what happened. Uh but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not, and I've told you this before. I'm not one. I'm not closed off to doing any sort of voiceover work at all. It just wasn't a thing that I thought I would ever end up being involved in at all. Right? Even when you started talking about, it, I was like, well, yeah, look, man, if you need me to do something, like reach out. But I'm not gonna go set up a a, a, a voice dot me account and and let people hire me. I don't know if that exists. Don't go there. Don't don't go there. Uh, listener, I'm telling you not to go there. Mike's already done it, but I have no idea what's there. <laughs> so I'm just fair warning. I just made it up because I couldn't remember the service that a lot of people use. Uh, Michael will remember it. It's, uh, what is that? Voice service? 365. There we go. Voice 123. There voice we go. See, that's, that's the one I was thinking about, but I couldn't yeah. remember it. So I just made up a voice.me. I'm telling you, I again, do not don't have go a voice there. 123 account. I did not set one of those up. So don't look for me there. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it keeps coming up. I was having a chat with a uh, good friend of mine yesterday uh, about he has a internet radio show that he does. And we were talking about we actually got into talking about uh, hybrid meetings and doing that. And he was like, this sounds interesting because all the times I hear people doing like hybrid meetings, the audio quality is crap. And I said, yep, that's the thing I can't stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I finally found another person that really cares about one, the audio quality and two, uh, they are, uh, as vain as I am about showing up in video meetings and looking good. Like (laughs) (laughs) zoom cuts actually got me to look at shortcuts on the Mac. And I realized that at least in 13.4 or whatever the latest Mac OS version is, Shortcuts really isn't that bad. And when you set your enter key to be your actions button, you can take different things inside of shortcuts and add it to your shortcut with like two keystrokes. Yep. Ventura 13.4 is the latest version. So yeah, on each of the things. So right, I need to work on it, but I'm setting up a a Zoom shortcut that automatically enables original sound anytime I go into a Zoom meeting because that is an action now. Nice. Nice. So for, because I don't think this was out when we recorded last week. It was not. Okay. So Zoom Cuts is a new app from the people, uh, Liminal, who who belong to Zoom now, because Zoom did buy them, uh, that also make Zoom ISO. If anybody's heard us, you know, talk about Zoom ISO or Zoom, uh, what is the other one? OSC uh, control. And I sent, I forwarded Mike an email about it when I first got the email from Liminal because I'm on their mailing list. And I was like, huh. This is cool. I honestly thought it was just like you install like a wrapper app and then it, you know, exposes a bunch of stuff and shortcuts. And that's apparently not how it works. Um, and then Mike forwarded me a link, which we will put in the show notes for anybody interested, because uh, this does let you add more shortcuts with uh, Zoom. <clears throat> but Mike forwarded me an email to the uh, office hours where they were discussing this. And my first thought was, oh, I got that email probably. And my second thought was, huh, why did I not suspect that they were going to have a conversation about this when I saw the first email <laughs> that it was out? Right? I should have known this was going to be a thing. Um, did you watch it? I have not watched it yet. I'm going to. So, I've grabbed it and downloaded it, but I hadn't, hadn't listened to it yet. Spoiler alert. You can run Zoom Cuts, and because Zoom Cuts is not just a wrapper, you can run those shortcuts on iOS. So if you have admin access or if you are a host of a meeting, there are specific shortcuts you can run on iOS that would allow you to uh, do things inside of Zoom, which means if you wanted to, you could assign a double tap or triple tap back tap to a shortcut that would provide any details in a Zoom meeting if necessary or mute all participants or something else that you need to do is in order to make that happen. So, all right. So we will be playing with that. I will be looking at shortcuts on the Mac again, because it honestly feels to me like it would be easier to create and modify shortcuts on the Mac 
if shortcuts is you know working and navigable on the Mac. Yeah. So it sounds like that has changed too. I see. This is one of the problems with with software for me. This is a problem that I have. And I used to be better about this. Whenever there would be an update, if something was broken prior, I would always go check to see if they fixed it. But then they train you to, you know, nope, we didn't fix it. Nope, we didn't fix it. Nope, we didn't fix it. Then you just stop looking, which is where I'm at now. I just stop looking. So we'll follow up on that. Maybe shortcuts will help us with the journaling or medical. Oh, hold on. I want to go back to that for a second, though, with the journaling. So from your perspective, because I, I, I was thinking about this and there's a little maybe you can clear up first i'm going to ask you to clear up some possibly clear up some uh confusion for me if you can i I understand if you cannot because people are confused about it and i have not watched any of the keynote sessions so this journaling app that apple has introduced it has the ability and there's an api for the app uh so that my understanding initially was that apps would be able to donate information into the journaling app for suggestions and to walk it back for a second and tell me if I'm wrong. So with the journaling app, one of the features about it that is cool is that when you go in to make a new entry, if there's going to be things that's going to suggest that you may want to add to that journal entry, right? Yeah. So my initial understanding of the API uh, that Apple has created and that is there for developers is that let's say carrot weather, right? Cause carrot's probably going to do this. So carrot weather, could donate the temperature for where I was that day or the weather conditions for where I was this particular day when mm-hmm. I'm making a journal entry, right? So I can incorporate that into my journal entry and say, well, you know, today it was, you know, these weather conditions and, you know, then maybe I fill out the journal entry because it was such a nice day. I took the kids out and blew up their pool and, you know, they got to play in right. the pool, right? Now, here's some pictures that Apple has. Here's some has, pictures that Apple suggested because yep. I took. Yeah, right. So that that all makes sense to me. I have, and s- it only shows you pictures of the kids and pools because it interpreted that information. So uh-huh, if you took more pictures, that is fancy. Man. Then you like can just it. tap on those pictures. I, I that's how I see it working because obviously we haven't been able to try journal out, but right. Uh, day one kind of does this, but I think it's going to be better with Apple. Now, the thing that I and people when when the rumors first leaked about, you know, there's supposedly going to be a journaling app that Apple is going to make and it's going to have these kind of features in it. The obvious question was, is this going to be a day one killer or is day one going to be able to also play in this space? And when I say day one killer, I don't mean like, you know, day one's got a business now. It's all over because there are people that are probably never going to stop using day one. Uh, I think their business is probably fine, honestly. But the question really was, are people going to jump over to using like people like me, for example, who I've played with day one or Michael will even be a better example because he has stuff in day one. uh, And maybe he goes to the journaling app now because it has these features and day one does not have all of these features and capabilities. Or would Apple have an API that day one could hook into to also be able to receive, say, that that notification, I mean, that that weather conditions from uh, Carrot and the suggested photos based off what you're writing or uh. things like that, right? And I've heard two, I've heard dissenting opinions about what the API does. So the first part that I've just discussed, which is Carrot can hook into this and say, hey, I'm going to donate what the weather was here. And Overcast can say, well, you listen to these three podcasts today. And, you know, so on and so forth. That's a part of it. Like third party apps can can push in content of what you've done so that you can incorporate those very easily into your journal entry. Makes sense. I've heard mixed opinions on whether or not day one could make use of that same information or not. For an example, uh, were, were they clear about that in the in the keynote or is it? I do not have that answer. Or did they just say and there's an API and then they ran off the stage? Yeah, I, I don't remember for sure. Okay. Well, we'll follow up on it. I, I was just curious if you if, if it was something that like, you know, because sometimes people are watching the keynote and they, they get laser focused on one thing and then they miss a key word. You know, they miss a, miss a word here, miss a couple of words there, which can make all the difference when they packed in as much stuff as it seemed like they did. Uh, but yeah, the journaling app is interesting to me. I think it may, I'm not going to say for sure, might start me to journaling just because it'll be easier. Uh, I will definitely have a few entries because I'm going to test it and see how it works. Right. I don't know if I'll keep doing it, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, health is coming to the iPad. That's a new thing. I'm kind of happy about that. 
and we'll be following up with more information, more things that we're interested in, I think, um, because there's a lot out there. I, I have heard things and then not remember what they were. Uh, <laughs> I uh, promise to double tap for this past week. They it was it was uh, WWDC every day except for Monday. Yeah, I tell you what, I will listen to Tuesday's episode for sure, and probably Wednesday's because Shelly Brisbane is on Wednesday, so she'll be talking about yeah. some accessibility stuff that nobody else is talking about. So and listen to Saturdays too. Uh, it's not Saturday this, yet. This yeah, but it will be Saturday when people get this. Oh ah, well, yeah. Who? So I'm forewarning you to listen to Saturdays. Ah, okay. I mean, who's on Saturday? Me. Oh, again? Did well? Did you did you hear what they did last Saturday? Uh, I think so. With the like news recap, the fifteen minute, yeah, where she just read down the news. That's what I wanted with Friday Finds, uh, but it's kind of turned into its own show. However, they're trying something a little bit different. So yeah, give that a listen. Uh, I, I did hear the episode, and I was like, huh, that's that's interesting. I'm not sure I tuned in to Double Tap for this. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is kind but, of the problem, though. I mean, given that it's a Saturday show, I can see, and I think I know what happened. Well, hold on. I'll give you a good edit point so you don't have to try to edit around that. So I was listening to that, and I legitimately thought, like, oh, that's interesting. I did not tune into Double Tap to hear somebody just read down a bunch of headlines for me, though. Like, I really didn't. Uh, and why didn't you get Laura, like, if you were going to do this? Uh, but the other thing I thought about is I see what happened here, though. Uh, but to yeah. finish my oh. thought, though, Sean was probably like, listen, man, I did not sign up to do this six days a week, and I'm not happy about it. And they're like, okay, we're going to try something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yep, probably something like that. Huh. I, I that That's interesting, though, that Friday Finds was meant to be that, and it's now turned into another thing altogether. All right, so somehow we lost part of Demasi's recording. Don't know what happened there. And honestly, this episode is already late and I've got other stuff to work on. So I'm recording this quick outro. If you want to connect with us, then feel free to reach out at Payom, P-A-Y-O-W-N. Well, I guess let me redo that. I'm... Payone at unmute.community. He's Demasi, D A M A S A G, at unmute.community. And uh, send us your feedback, TW at your own pay.com.